Yesterday in this broadcast, I brought you a full half hour special on a school mass and school shooting, the worst school shooting in Texas history in Uvidel, Texas at Hobbs Elementary, where an 18 year old suspected shooter was shot. Now, there are new developments in this case. Let's recap to you what happened yesterday. A lot of schools are heartbroken, especially Flower Bluff and even Oxford. The, the people who are sued in this, who had a school shooting months ago, are now but is now a part of this. So now what we're looking at here we're looking at pe people who have who who just don't understand about this. I mean kids are horrified about this and especially Especially schools who want to step in and say, we need to do something about this. So what happened? Well, most school districts have police presence in their schools to prevent this kind of stuff happening again. So most Midway is now doing a, uh, a lockout, which just basically is no one's allowed to have any food delivery, food delivered or anything else. And just an hour ago, Robstown ISD introduced an app for student safety. In case you didn't know, they also had another app for, for bullying with their QR codes. So... Let's take a look at let's take a look at the uh, Robstown ISD app. Seen and reported safety even more so at the top of the line for many area schools. We have heard from districts who have increased their security measures just in this final week of classes. One of those area districts, Robstown, giving us a look at one of their security tools, which happens to be an app. Yeah, this app allows Robstown ISD to use it as a visitor management system and responds to live situations while also preventing offenders from passing front doors of campuses. Simone Simpson is here now with that story. Simone? Leslie, Rudy, it's something no one wants to think about, but being prepared for an emergency situation can save lives. That's just one reason Robstown ISD introduced this app to staff. It allows them to initiate an emergency response. I spoke with the superintendent and the district instructional technology specialist to see how it works. That sound can save lives. We can actually respond to something if it happens live on a campus and also to prevent offenders from going on to our, past our front doors. With options on the app like secure, lockdown, evacuate, shelter, and hold. We can share that information with everyone that's involved. The safety of students is in the hands of teachers and staff, literally. But the power of Raptor is the fact it's the real-time data. We can instantly see at a district level, even a camp campus level, who's accounted for, who's missing, who's even injured, and that is constantly coming in as long as that incident is live. The app even comes with a roll call list of students. That way, if an emergency comes up, teachers can still make sure their students are accounted for. Safety is our first priority, and we take that very seriously in everything that we do because we care about our kids, we care about our families, and we care about our community. The Raptor Technologies app can also be used to vet visitors. Anytime a, a visitor comes to our campuses, they have to bring an ID, the driver's license, and we scan for any type of background. And at a time where QR codes are used in just about everything, here's how the district is using it as a reporting tool for students. It's an actually online reporting system, but it's for anonymous. So students have the ease of being able to, in privacy, be able to report anything incident that they would like. For district leaders, they say the best response comes with staff being fully trained and local first responders can help. 
they too will be trained on how to use the app. When it comes to first responders and the Raptor app, we had the pleasure of bringing them on board in February and demonstrating the power of this app. Of course, in this day and age, it's, it's most important to do is that everyone knows what to do in any type of incident at any time of the day. Simone Simpson, 3 News. All right, Simone, thank you for that report. And I think it's a, it's this and is the same app that Robson SD used to report bullying. So I hope it really does work on this. But in the meantime, there is new developments and new latest. There is new developments into this case, like like the posts. Now, the the posts have just came in from hours ago when Governor Greg Abbott read the posts from. <clears throat> From the uh, from the shooter, and when we come and when we come back, we're gonna read to you the posts from that suspected shooter. We we'll also we'll we'll still also bring you the very latest of this as it goes. We'll still, we'll still also bring you the very latest from other from other news and other districts how how they respond to that. Then later on, COVID, which we haven't done or which we haven't we haven't done yesterday because of the. Uh, because of the special, and then, and then plus other topics and updates. We'll be right back. Up front tonight, more on the latest of the, uh, more on the latest on the, scoop sh on the school shooting at Hobbs Elementary in Texas. Now, we just heard from Robston ISD about a new app that is being introduced to report anonymous tips. Now we're going to bring on the very latest of that school shooter who, who dropped hints on social media. Now remember, this could hold clues about what had happened before he was shot. So let's take a look at, let's take a look at what Governor Greg Abbott read. The third post. From uh, Inside Edition. We're learning chilling new details about the teenager who carried out the Texas massacre. 18-year-old Salvador Ramos posted messages on social media hinting about his evil plans. Wait till tomorrow with this warning and this. Kids be scared, along with photos of two assault rifles and a high-capacity magazine. The morning of the massacre, he sent this text to a young woman he knew. You gonna repost my gun pics? She answered, what your guns got to do with me? He replied, I got a little secret I want to tell you. Texas Governor Greg Abbott revealed three chilling Facebook posts. He said, I'm going to shoot my grandmother. The second post was, I shot my grandmother. The third post, maybe less than 15 minutes before arriving at the school was, I'm going to shoot an elementary school. Here's Jim Murray. Friends say Ramos was a loner who was bullied at school for a speech impediment and reportedly came from a family troubled by drug addiction. Several months before the massacre, he came to live here with his grandmother, who worked for the school district. He slept on a mattress on the floor. Joseph Moreno is a neighbor. Did you know that he had guns? No. No, like I say, he had just turned 18 and he went in bought it. And Did he told this friend of his, look, look what I got. Did and the friend said, hey, bro, what? Why do you need those for? Just don't worry about it. That was yeah, don't sense. worry don't about worry it. About it. it. Kind of gives you chills, doesn't it? Yes. Ramos reportedly became obsessed with the video game Call of Duty. School friends told GMA his behavior was increasingly bizarre. I was even started being his friend no more because like he was being weird with like not only me but like a lot of other people. He had scars on his face and I remember somebody asking him like what happened? Are you okay? Because he showed up to school with them and he just straight out told them you know, with a smile. I, I did it myself. Forensic psychiatrist Dr. Keith Ablo says Ramos has similar traits to other mass killers, including the teenager accused of the Buffalo supermarket massacre and the Parkland school shooter. Again, we have a shooter who is socially isolated, uh, who has uh, psychological or physical characteristics that marginalize him, who was bullied. That's a prescription for disaster, and it's present in the majority of school shootings. This video shows graduating seniors from the killer's high school being welcomed by kids at the elementary school. Ramos targeted the school just three days later. 
The day of the shooting, Ramos had a fight with his grandmother over failing to graduate. She was shot in the face and is in critical condition. He shot his own grandmother, um, and from that point just triggered this, this mass shooting. Ramos fled the home in his grandparents' pickup truck, crashing into this gully. Surveillance video shows him running into the school seconds later. The massacre was about to begin. It makes me sick. He was playing video games? Look at this! Look at this! All these video games right here on my shelf? Look! That's the cause of all these massacres. You have Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. You have Deadpool. You have Grand Theft Auto 5. You have Watch Dogs. You have Family Guy. You have... Well, that's all the M games I have. But still, the M for Mature is the key point in this. And like I talked to you about, you we need to better educate our kids in buying their first video game on what types of games they can play. Because as someone starts to approach, your child is playing video games. And parents, you're not making sure that your kids you're not making you're you're trying you're not making sure your kids are being supervised when playing these type of video games like Grand Theft Auto. Matter of fact, let me just uh we're gonna let me re let me we're gonna rewatch a clip here from Rob's rants. Maybe that will shed some light. People can be argumentative and say, oh, this and that and the other. I'm not going to be argumentative. This is going to be a teaching tool for you parents out there that want to get their child their first video game. And look, I get it. You want to, I mean, your friends are playing Grand Theft Auto so that you can get it. That is that nonsense. So let's rewatch this. Serious? You want me to buy a gun and we can just do it for fun? No, of course I'm fucking not serious. Actually, we'll watch, we'll we watch the clip when we return. Let's bring up to speed on COVID-19 here. 59 new cases today in Oasis County, no new deaths. Almost over, over 4,600 new cases in the state with 16 deaths. The number since the 17th were over 10%. And over 680,000 tests taken. Over 2,300 people in ICU, and almost 20, and over 20,000 people are hospitalized since 23rd. And since the 24th, 21.3 percent million have had at least one dose. 17.9 fully vaccinated. 74.6 and 62.6. In the United States, 585 million doses have been given fully vaccinated. 221 million and 61.1 percent of the population has been fully vaccinated. How about our local schools? Well, on the last day of school, there were no cases, as well as Monday, zero new cases, the 23rd. Throughout the past, throughout, throughout that Wednesday, Tuesday, and Monday, there were no new cases. But, no new cases. We're still at zero, which is good. Two new total cases were made, two. One from intermediate student to elementary student. Two for elementary staff, zero through primary, primary student, primary staff. One, EC, one ECC student, zero for ECC. Zero for transportation, zero for staff. That's good. April, the same thing. April's the same thing. Third, January is at 190. Well, this is probably worse. We're still at too many cases at 480, not over 4, 400, over 400. But it's uh, a 
but No new uh, news in COVID, but the three-dose vaccine is effective in young kids. So in the meantime, while this is all happening, you guys need to make sure that you're being vaccinated and staying socially distanced. Mask is very important, as well as hand washing. Hot water, can't be over 110 degrees, 20 seconds, soap and water. Do not use antibacterial soap because that can cause damage to your skin. Just use regular soap and water. That helps out a lot. Also, what you guys need also... If you're on transportation, if you're on transportation, what you guys need to do is take extra extra precautions if you're fully vaccinated and boosted. If you're not, follow the mask mandate. Also, if you're quarantined, you need to stay in quarantine in the middle of five days. After the fifth day, get tested again. If you're negative, you're clear. If you're not, you have to stay in the five days. Also, if your child's under two, no mask. If you're riding airplanes, you have the option to, from the TSA, to wear your mask. If you have a medical condition, you are exempt. You are exempt from, from the wearing of a mask. And as for quarantine, the only time you ever need, need to leave, leave the house with quarantine is if you're taking out the trash or checking the mail. That's it. Don't leave the house like Lisa Guerrero did, and she got COVID. Just trying to follow these steps that we can all stay safe. Give me a break continues just a moment with more about video game violence. So we're still talking about the uh, the Texas mass shooting in in Uvidale, Texas at Hollis Elementary where an 18 year old was shot after that massacre. After he shot his grandmother, shot up the school, and fled police. Now what now, what he said earlier was some video games that he played. That's one of the leading causes of the school shooting. I mean, that's that's what prompted you guys. That's what prompted me to, to rewatch this rant from Rob's rants, and I took him very seriously. What's up, you wild gamers? You better put that down before I report you to the news. Video games, guys. Violent video games. That's the answer to all the mass shootings and the terrible stuff going on in the world. How did you not see this coming? Violent video games? Really? What the? You know it's these oversensitive parents like my son plays a game where you just shoot people. That is mentally, you know, that is not good. He's gonna one day do that when he gets older. Lady, you got way more important things to take note on. Dude, I was like seven years old playing violent video games. Well, what does that mean, violent? Does it have to have a gun? Do I have to be shooting people? Man, I was playing Harry Potter when I was a kid, freaking casting flippendo to people. Am I gonna walk down the street and do that? I was a kid, like what, 12, 13 or whatever, playing Grand Theft Auto, Vice City, which was so fun. Ironically, it's like, you know, you know as a kid, like, oh, obviously, you know, it's a, it's a freaking cartoon, it's a freaking game. Oh, look, I just freaking sliced some guy's head off with a machete. The cops are gonna come after me, and when they shoot me, I'm killed. Obviously, something you don't want in real life, because I'd be dead. It's not like, oh, death. Then I could respawn in real life. I could argue and say video games are educational. You know, World War II, World War One. All the games inspired based off of that. It teaches you what it's like, how it was, the culture, the people. We might also make a thing that says how many people enlisted to serve our country after playing video games. And you got articles like this. Why video games aren't causing America's gun problem. Look at the chart in rising sales and then violent gun deaths. How do you even correlate the two? You know you must be mentally ill. Most people are on freaking medication. Disturbed 
not healthy, people around them don't seem to care or notice, background checks are a joke, you know, those things make sense. But it's violent video games because lying news media said so. Now Walmart's pulling back their video games. Nice job with revenue losses. What genius thought of that? Okay, it is uh, our decision uh, that we we're gonna pull the violent video games because we don't support the shootings going on. We don't support, I understand you don't support it, lady. Who does support that shit? But pulling the video games off of, yeah, have fun with that. Hey, so this year we're down uh, $20 million of revenue this year. Hey, talk about behaviors. You gotta watch how, behaviors? Why, because I get upset playing Russian Grand Theft Auto or something like that? We've all been upset. You don't think I get angry at video games? Then you got Twitch streamers making a living playing the shit. And everyone thinks they have to throw in their two senses about it. Like, Rob, but it's, there's, did you read? Did you read that one report, you know, on Facebook or YouTube? Did you read that one report that actually had, there's a correlation between that one shooter, you know, back in the day when he shot up that, you know, mall, it said that he loved playing games like Call of Duty and Grand Theft Auto. So th th there you go. Well, one billion people have played those games and none of them shot up a mall. So let's just, you know, pin that to it. What's the agenda here? Is this a distraction to the real problem that we gotta address? like mental health, access to getting mental help. You're not normal in the head when you do that. You don't just grow up as a kid like, you know what, I remember that one mission I played in Grand Theft Auto. Let's reenact it today, Jim. Are you serious? You want me to buy a gun and we can just do it for fun? Oh, of course I'm fucking not serious, you idiot. And if you want to shut down this entire argument, because it is on the same level, we pretty much might as well be banning violent movies. Movies encouraging adolescents to have sex and be on drugs. Movies convincing you to, you know, get in with the social norms and the peer pressure and start, you know, puffing the chiva. Blame the internet for all the stupid challenges that come out there. It's the internet's fault. It's YouTube's fault. People are snorting Sharpies eating Tide Pods, setting themselves on fire, stuffing Oreos in their buttholes, you name it. We're gonna start blaming the internet, we're gonna start blaming movies, and movies that are shooting up by everybody, and in the movies they're made to look like heroes. What, just because I have a freaking controller in my hand that's different? I thought it had to do with the mind. Even the bad influence friends you hang around with, it really goes back to who you are. Don't stand too close to your friend there, Billy. You'll catch it stupid. Mommy, can we get this Xbox? <laughs> Xbox, you mean prepare to shoot people down box? The PlayStation, you mean rape station? I, you ain't going anywhere near rape that. Station. I don't want to train my kid to become a killer. Thanks for the suggestion. Shout out to my Patreons. Subscribe if you feel like it and we'll get going with more videos. Now I agree. It's the cause of all of these massacres, those video games. That's why we had to better educate children on what types of games to play for their age. Like, if your child's under 10, then E. You can't have them play T. You can't have them play M. Those two. If your child's 10, then it's E10. If your child's T, teenagers, 13 and up. M for mature. That's at the 18, that's the, eight, that's the age of 17. That means that you, that, uh, what that basically means is you can play like Grand Theft Auto, Deadpool, Watch Dogs, Call of Duty, lots of those things. Only if you're in, only if you're 18 or older. Now, just a day after that shooting, there, there's a debate on gun reform. So let's take a look at it from CBS Evening News. As promised, a picture from Washington to the White House where President Biden announced today that the First Lady and he will travel here to Texas to look to comfort the victims and their families. Meanwhile, the shooting has reignited a larger debate, a debate over what some say are common sense gun safety legislations like universal background checks. For more, here's CBS's Ed O'Keefe. The political firestorm around gun control was on full display when Texas Governor Greg Abbott's press conference was interrupted by his Democratic opponent, Beto O'Rourke, arguing Republicans had done little to stop gun violence. Local officials tried to get him kicked out. 
You're a sick son of a bitch. You would come to a deal like this to make a political issue. Elsewhere, Golden State Warriors coach Steve Kerr, who's spoken out after previous mass shootings, couldn't hold back. When are we going to do something? I'm tired. I'm, I'm so tired of getting up here and offering condolences to, to the devastated families that are out there. I'm so tired of the, excuse me, I'm sorry. I'm tired of the moments of silence. Enough. So are parents who've been through the unimaginable before. You will hear these politicians uh, sending their thoughts and prayers. And some of them will say, our hearts are with the families. Well, guess what? The families don't need your freaking hearts. They need their kids. At the White House, President Biden said the Texas school shooter never should have had access to an AR-15 style rifle. The idea that an 18-year-old can walk into a store and buy weapons of war designed and marketed to kill is, I think, just wrong. Democrats plan to hold votes on new gun control bills, but leader Chuck Schumer wasn't optimistic. I know this is a slim prospect, very slim, all too slim. Republicans, as they've argued before, said new gun laws aren't the answer. Any firearm is potentially dangerous in the hands of a deranged lunatic. At the end of the day, the issue here is not the firearm. The stalemate is part of a pattern that stretches back to the rise of mass shootings in the 1990s. Presidents signal the country's collective grief. The prayers of the American people are with you. This is a day of mourning for the Virginia Tech community. They had their entire lives ahead of them. But then, very little is done. As we mentioned, the president says he plans to visit Uvalde in the coming days to meet with the victims' families. When he does, it'll be at least the 19th time since the Columbine High School shooting in 1999 that the president has visited a community transformed by a mass shooting. Tony? Just a remarkable figure there, Ed, and it does feel like we're on some sort of a treadmill and it's time to get off one way or another. Ed, thank you very much. And it is time to get off. Enough is enough, like he says. We don't need any more of this. Just because you are bullied, that doesn't mean you got to go get a gun, load it up, and go... On the whole school, like it's, like it's a grand theft, like it's a game of Grand Theft Auto, which is not. It's the real deal. Enough is enough. We need more gun laws. Even though it could take away Second Amendment rights, we need restrictions. We don't. We didn't. We don't need eighteen-year-olds. Since the legal age of drink is twenty-one, we ought to make guns. We ought to make it illegal for people to buy a gun if they're twenty-one or older. Hell, I'm under. I'm over twenty-one. I can go get a gun. Background checks. But in New York, if you plan on taking. Bring a gun to New York, you gotta fill out, you have to fill out applications, and that's no definition of the knife. As we showed you from John Stossel, it was tough. Very tough. Really, really tough. Now, during that time, a newscaster was in tears. So let's take a look at this one. Then we're gonna wrap it up. All right, I'm embarrassed. I like can't pull it together. Tears from CNN anchor Kate Baldwin over the school shooting. Please don't take a second for granted. Hug your family. Tell them you love them. Across the airways, there is shock. My rage. I've been encouraged not to express it today because I understand that people have been overwhelmed by the news this morning. And before you tell me to stay in my lane, this is my lane. This is my life. Gail King says she's at her wit's end. It's very difficult to report the details of this Texas school shooting without feeling the outrage and frustration and the deep, deep sadness. We cover these stories again and again and again and again, and you all know how it goes. Stephen Colbert recorded his show right after the news broke. Shortly before I came out here tonight, we learned of the unspeakable shooting in Uvalde, Texas today. And while we can add our prayers for the dead, there is nothing that can ever be said that can approach the immeasurable grief of those families. But while we're at it,
Let's play this time our leaders show a modicum of courage in trying to prevent this from ever happening again. Golden State Warriors head coach Steve Kerr expressed his fury. When are we going to do something? I'm tired. I'm, I'm so tired of getting up here and offering condolences. A moment of silence followed at the sports arena in Texas. Our thoughts and prayers are also with the victims of the horrific shooting today at Robb Elementary School in Uvalde, Texas. We mourn with their families and friends and the entire community. Here at Sandy Hook Elementary School in Newtown, Connecticut, there is shock and an increased police presence today as this town still grapples with being home to America's deadliest school shooting. When 10 years ago, a gunman shot and killed 20 students and six staff members. I spoke with Mark Barden, whose son Daniel was killed at Sandy Hook Elementary. The emotion, did, did all of the, the horror come back to you? Oh, yeah. My seven-year-old son Daniel's shooting murder in his first grade classroom is something that will just be with me every minute. This is America. We were supposed to be able to do things and be the people we wanted to be, and now we are in a crazy place. I agree. I very much agree. I don't think you know my rage when it comes to shit like this. Friday, you will hear my rage and my frustration towards this crap. In five years of doing this show, I have never been pissed like I am tonight. So on Friday, I don't think you know my rage. But I know, deep in my heart, it goes to the victims, the parents, and the kids. That's all for this edition of Give Me a Break Wednesday. We'll see you again for Give Me a Break Friday. Or should I say, Give Me a Rage Break Friday. For all of us here at YouTube. And Give Me a Break. <sighs> Good night. <laughs>